Welcome back to Cheddar, everyone. The battle between the White House and former National Security Advisor John Bolton over the release of his book, The Room Where It Happens, has dramatically escalated. The Justice Department filed a lawsuit attempting to block the book's publication yesterday, just one week before it's set to hit shelves. And joining me now is Bradley Moss, National Security Attorney, to break it all down. Bradley, thank you for being here. First things first, does this lawsuit have any legal standing? Yeah, no, it absolutely has legal standing. And what people also need to uh, understand about the lawsuit is what its true purpose is. There is an element of it which is trying to get John Bolton to pull back the publication, to retrieve all copies. But unless the government's going to file an emergency restraining order like today, that's simply not going to happen. This lawsuit just got filed. The thing's coming out next week. That's not going to happen. The real purpose of this lawsuit is to seize the money, is to get what's called a constructive trust imposed to seize all the proceeds that John Bolton would have gotten from this book, whether it's the sales of the book, any proceeds from a movie deal or TV series, anything like that, the government can seize those funds and it goes into the U.S. Treasury. That's based on existing case law. And because of how John Bolton did this, he's almost certainly guaranteed to lose that fight. Well, in the last hour or so, some reporters have begun tweeting out snippets from the book, including a story that President Trump asked China's President Xi Jinping in a June 2019 meeting to help him win re-election by asking him to buy U.S. agriculture products. Is this the kind of thing that Trump is trying to prevent from getting out there? And could this be considered classified material? Well, sure, it absolutely could be classified material because it relates to foreign government information, relates to foreign diplomacy between the U.S. government and a foreign government. So, sure, there are ways in which that could have been classified, though it appears the government actually cleared those portions of the book uh, from what Mr. Bolton has already uh, secured. That being said, this is the kind of information that would have been helpful six months ago when we were in the midst of the impeachment investigation and when House impeachment investigators were asking people like John Bolton to come forward and testify and disclose the information they knew. John Bolton declined. He demanded that he be subpoenaed and he said he'd fight it in court. It wasn't until it got to the Senate trial that he suddenly said, oh, he'd be willing to testify. But by that point, it was too late. So this is good information to have. This is very concerning. It's potentially unethical and immoral by the president. But at this point, it's just about politics and whether or not this is going to harm the president's reelection chances more than anything else. Oh, yeah. And we do know that the administration as well was looking and seeking to block Bolton from testifying at that time. But I think the larger picture here, too, even with the snippets that we're reading through now and that are crossing the wires, does this signal any wrongdoing from the president during his time in office? So that's you know a bit of a tough question because the way it's framed, some of this could be viewed as typical U.S. government diplomacy, but just done with a Trumpian style and element. He, Donald Trump doesn't do you know subtlety; he is very bold and brash. And so we're viewing this in the frame of how he how he describes it, how he conveys that language to the Chinese uh, premier. But it's in the context of what the U.S. government always does. They're always trying to, you know, make for push for better trade deal, try to get a foreign government to buy more of their products from their, you know, private farmers and things like that. So it's hard to say that would have been impeachable, quote unquote, but it certainly would have been relevant. And it certainly is something that the U.S. public deserves to know in the lead up to the election in November. And so the administration right now saying that this book includes classified information, as we had discussed a moment ago. President Trump said he's considering any conversation that he has with another official highly classified. When it comes to national security, what actually is considered classified versus what isn't? Break that down for us. Sure. So in normal circumstances, it's based off an executive order that comes from the office of the president. The most recent one was issued by Barack Obama, and it still remains in effect today current uh, executive branch uh, implements it. And it outlines there's several categories of types of information the executive branch will create over time in the various aspects of its duties, implicating any number of topics like foreign relations, like source intelligence methods, things along those lines. And they'll classify them at different levels depending on how sensitive it is and whether and how the extent to which it'll be damaged to national security if it comes out. Now, the president's describing any communication with him as being classified. That's not reality. That's not how it actually normally works. But the president could have done that at the time if he had wanted to. There doesn't appear to be any situation where he actually personally intervened. The normal security officials appear to have handled classification. So what's going to come down in a criminal case, if there is one, 
because ultimately the classification is irrelevant in the civil case. But if there's a criminal indictment, this will come down to the propriety of the classification determinations at the time they were made. And what are the chances for an indictment of Bolton? I would say if you're John Bolton, that's your only fear right now because you don't care about the money. He's already got enough money as it is. Given what the government's already said, given how it outlined in its lawsuit that there is still classified information in here, and given the nature of Bolton's position at the time as the national security advisor, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. They could argue that some of this information that was still in there was properly classified. And if they do that, they would likely get a conviction. The question is, do they want to step on that proverbial grenade right now in the midst of an election? You know, there's an interesting snippet as we're reading through some of what's been posted, and I've got it here on my screen. This snippet in the Wall Street Journal uh, saying that after I became Trump's national security advisor in April 2018, had the most futile role of it all, I wanted to fit China trade policy into a broader strategic framework. Uh, he goes on and talks about the real question being Trump, is what Trump does about China's threat. Um, and talking about the military threat from China, he's also talking about the threat of China growing economically and outpacing growth of the United States. How should voters be considering all of what may be in this book? Should it get out and should they be reading through some of the snippets? And do you think it will sway any of the voter um, attention come November? Because, you know, Donald Trump is kind of, you know, a paradox in how he handles these things. Donald Trump likes to make these personal relationships with the senior folks. So he likes to have this personal relationship with, uh, with Chairman Xi out in China. But his administration has admittedly been rather tough on various aspects of Chinese uh, interference and a lot of what China is doing and how it's trying to expand its authority. So where John Bolton's outlining his you know, policy differences, that's somewhat of the John Bolton style old school diplomacy of how he was trying to confront China versus how Donald Trump was trying to confront China. That's a policy dispute. I'm not necessarily going to say where I would fall down in it, but I don't necessarily think people cared which particular method was used, if they felt that the administration was properly pushing back on China, whether or not they felt that Trump's more businessman, you know, glad handing behind closed doors, making favors was sufficient for what they needed. I don't know if that's going to really sway anybody. The real issue will be any of the unethical and immoral parts that come out of this that really concern people about how we're being portrayed as a country when Donald Trump represents us and whether or not they feel that this is too much, they won't allow this going forward and would vote him out in just quickly while we have you, Bradley, and then we got to go. This is not the first book that somebody from the Trump administration will be looking to publish or has published. Uh, of course, naturally, I think back to Unhinged, an insider's account of the Trump White House. That is literally the title of Omarosa's book. And so does, does Bolton have any base case that he could make for other books from White House officials under the Trump administration already having come out that would allow him to still move this forward? Well, the book's going to come out. Nothing's going to stop it at this point, unless, like I said, unless the government gets it at a temporary injunction. The only thing uh, Bolton's going to try to argue is some kind of bad faith by the government in how it handled the pre-publication review process. It doesn't matter what the government did or didn't do in those other cases, like with Omarosa. The case law is rather clear, unfortunately, for Mr. Bolton. He had to go through the pre-publication review process. He didn't finish it. All right. Bradley Moss, national security attorney, thank you so much for joining us here today.